Hey friend, Chris here from MyLogic Pro Rules, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I wanna show you three dead simple ways of locating or viewing that auxiliary channel strip that you are sending your tracks to. So let me ask you, have you ever had a project that has ballooned in size and you've got tracks everywhere, plugins, all sorts of stuff going on and you're sending tracks like your drums or vocals or anything else to a separate reverb on a separate auxiliary channel strip, or you're using an output to send to a bus. And at least for me, sometimes when my project gets a little too big, I open the mixer and I'm just scrolling from side to side, just trying to find that one freaking channel strip, right? So again, there are three dead simple ways to locate these auxiliary channel assignments via buses. It's so simple. Let me show you right now. All right, as you can see on screen, there is plenty of stuff going on in this project. And if I open the mixer, oh man, we got tracks and assignments for days. Isn't that kind of crazy? So what I'd like to show you is a dead simple way to view these bus assignments immediately, as soon as you think about it. So first I'm going to select the snare bus that has a couple different assignments here. First, I'm sending the snare bus to bus 23 and bus 25 for parallel effects. And the output is sending to bus 19, which is presumably a track stack, which we can see right at the top here. Now, starting in the inspector, which is the section on the left-hand side here, I want to see what's going on with bus 23. If I click on it, of course, the menu pops up, offering me the ability to reassign the send field. And we can see, oh, it's bus 23. It's the attack parallel channel. If I click outside of the menu to close it, okay, now we can see on the right-hand side, there's the attack parallel channel strip with the enveloper and compressor. However, every time you click on this field, the menu is going to pop up. It's just an extra step, which is unnecessary. Instead, you want to commit to memory to hold shift when you click on these assignments to switch the view on the right-hand side in the inspector to view the associated channel strip with that bus. And look at that. Now I can look at the pump parallel effect with my compressor without having to close the menu each and every time. So I'm going to click on bus 19 while holding shift to view the top level of the track stack on the right-hand side. And again, click on either bus or output to quickly shift the view in the inspector. All right, next up, let's pop open the mixer. And this time around, I'm just scanning the project, right? I'm looking around, I'm trying to find, oh man, where is bus 70? I, I don't know. I'm looking around the project, but this is just too annoying. So if I hold shift and click on bus 70 in the mixer, Logic Pro will take me to the associated channel strip and even highlight the channel strip three times so I can clearly see, oh, there's the acoustic reverb that I was looking for. Let me make my adjustments. And again, this is for any send or output assignment. So if I hold shift and click bus 18, right there, there's my track stack. Hold shift and click, there's the stereo output, bus 53, you know, just so on and so forth. So when you wanna quickly find the associated channel strip with an output, with a bus assignment, just hold shift and click on that field. Now, the third option for quickly identifying which channel strips are going where in the mixer, let's go right up to the top here where it says sends on faders in the mixer. Now, depending on your Mac screen size, you may or may not see this option at the top. In that case, you can just click on one of these send fields to reveal sends on faders at the very bottom. All right, so now I can see for the Harmony Crush channel strip, which is the parallel compression channel strip that I have for my harmonies. Every channel strip associated with this bus assignment, we can see the send field is in yellow and you can see gold cap faders for each of those channels. So if I scan the mixer, nothing else in the mixer is sending to bus 51. So I can make an adjustment here using the fader itself. I'll leave it set to zero. But there, we've located these three channel strips, which are associated with this channel strip right here, where I can also make further adjustments. So if we switch to maybe, let's say, the attack channel strip again, we don't see faders, we don't see anything in gold. So let's go down the way here. And there we go. The kick, the snare, and the toms are all being sent to bus 23. I can make my adjustments. And when I'm done, I can just turn off sends on faders by going to the top here. The mixer reverts back or 
click on a send field and turn off sends on faders. There you go, three dead simple ways to locate that channel strip associated with that bus, that output that you're trying to find. And instead of wading through hundreds of tracks and channel strips, instead you can just hold shift and click in the inspector, hold shift and click in the mixer or reveal sends on faders so you can find that channel strip. I hope this video was helpful for you and I'll see you for more later this week. Take care.